And then we decided we'd go and fight the fires with the fiery people and hop on the back of a fire truck to we were bloody stupid. But anyhow. <laughs> so you have a long neck of beer each, you and Freddie, mm. which would have meant you were over the limit and you're on, and you're on a fire truck. Yeah. So the fire was gone from around the house at that stage. Oh yes, yeah, so they got into the city, uh, into the city, into the CBD of Anglesey, into the... We were fighting the fire around the river. Mm. The, sea, the, the wind had changed from north to west, mm. as it does. So I remember they hacksawed the pipe from the tank near our bedroom so they'd get water directly from the tank. Remember that? They hacksawed the pipe that went into the ground of the house yeah. so they could turn the tap and get water directly from there. Can't recall that. And all the guys were taking turns with a hacksaw to cut through the water pipe. Then they bent it away mm. and the guys were filling up their backpacks at the fire there at our, at our tank. Oh, yeah. I've forgotten that. But mm. Can't recall that. But there was one fellow was scout, I think, with a backpack on his back mm. and just going around squirt, squirt with all these spot fires. And I said, look, I've got a fire under the house, can you come and help me? No, he said, that's your problem. And he went on squirt, squirt and disappeared. Mm. I remember that was the Chisholm was trying to cut down the big tree near the chimney yeah. and the bull ants got up their crutch, wasn't it? Yeah, he got into Les uh, Chisholm's underpants and bit him on the balls and uh, Mum was handing him Chanel number five like this to put on the... Uh, the, yeah, the burnt, the yeah, burnt yeah. box. Yeah, the, the, the that was Les Chisholm, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then the, the Chisholm Keats said, when Rosa turned up, it was a great time of putting a Chanel number five on Dave's balls. <laughs> so, they're all doing okay, aren't they? Well, they were, because they took over Caltech's um, company in, in Geelong. But it cost them a million dollars because they were price fixing with another couple of uh, oil. Well they got charged, did they? Yeah. And they put their hand up and said, yeah, we did it. Alright. Well, it probably cost a million dollars in legals to buy it anyhow, so you don't win. Yeah. So I wonder who they were price fixing with. Uh, um, well, it might have been Mobile or uh, one of those companies. In Tamworth and Port Macquarie, they've never caught them. Haven't they? No. Yeah. No one's ever been approved. Well, the story is they have a breakfast meeting and every every service has got the same price. Mm. In Tamworth, it used to be to the 0.00 cent, just about. And there was one firm that broke uh, with the rest, and he was considered an outcast. <coughs> With the um, practical jokes, remember there was the, the dentist and Bill Wishart, and was it Chas who was the other practical joker with them? Who used to play practical jokes on each other? Uh, well, the dentist and the chemist. Um, it was Bill Wishart and... Bill Wishart, Chas Gibson. Who was the dentist? Um, oh, the alcoholic dentist. Yeah, Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. And um, I think Bill Wishart went over, or he rang up and he said, this is the water board. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to, I'm sorry to tell you, but we have to turn the water off. Would you fill up every receptacle in your um, clinic surgery uh, with water because it'll be off for, for 24 hours at least? And Bill Wishart went over half an hour later and here's all these tubs and buckets and things full of water. Where did you family got all these stuff? Yeah, for Frank. <laughs> Frank Edison. Yeah. So I remember Frank, he used to get absolutely blotted out of the cryo club. And he'd go up the back stairs of his house on his hands and knees. But wasn't, what was the one where, who got Bill Wishart over the, um, the Citizens um, Defence Force? That was me. Yeah. So you sent him a letter on war letterhead, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, 
somebody was working in the war department and they got official letterhead and I sent a letter I forgot what the hell it was about. It was saying that due to your military service oh, as an officer right. in Changi or whatever else, that your um, and your leadership, but please do not tell anyone to would alarm the populace. Yeah. Uh, but should there be civil uprise, we were looking for representative people to do it and take two lengths of rope, three buckets, and a, <laughs> and a foot pump with you. And uh, I thought you sent that to him, didn't you? I did. Yeah. And he never knew who did it. No, no. <laughs> Did he turn up? I got, I got no idea. <coughs> but you were the one that wasn't in the game normally. <laughs> yeah, well, I was too bloody busy. Do I remember <laughs> Mum and I and uh, Chess Gibbs and, uh, and uh, the chemist spoke, what's his name? Frank right? Henderson. No, no, that was the dentist. Oh, sorry, there was Bill Wishart. Bill Wishart were at the travel lodge. At a dinner, a dinner dance, and there were um, people dancing on the floor, and people leaving and leaving half bottles of wine on their tables. And uh, I said to Bill and and, uh, and Chess, look, that's a, a pure waste. Why don't you go around and collect those half bottles and bring them back to our table? So here they are, they were half full too. So they're going around collecting all these half bottles and bringing back to our table to drink. And a young British couple that were on the floor were quite in a sense because they had left the <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't finished drinking it. So uh, they came over and objected and we, we got talking to them and, you know, they, we got quite friendly with them. And we were laughing and joking about the whole thing. And the next day I got a ring from them. They'd, I'd given them my number. That the woman was vomiting. Was this anything I could do to help her? And uh, she, I said, "Oh, come, come up to our house," which they did. And I prescribed her some antibiotics or something. But it was, she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. She didn't realise that she was having nausea or pregnancy. And I didn't bloody know about it. Well, the other one, like that, was Rosa Chisholm when you took her to Queensland. Oh, that was another matter. Yes. Um, Rosa, all the way up there, was saying to Nancy, Grandma, um, Nancy, I think I'm pregnant. Oh, no, Rosa, uh, Rosa it's just changed her life. She was, was 44, saying, wasn't she? Yeah, she was in, like, in her early 40s. And I said, no, Rosa, I think it's early changed her life. And everybody agreed with me. No, no, I think I'm pregnant. And while we are up there, we were staying with Mom and Pop. And she was wiping herself and saying, Nance, is that pink? Is that pink? No, it wasn't bloody pink. Anyhow, when we got back, I said, Rosa, give me a sample of your urine and I'll check it for you. So I checked it and she was pregnant. And Joanne? Yeah, so I checked it again just to make sure and she was pregnant the second time. And uh, I rang up Mum and I said, look, Rose's test is positive. Will you ring her and tell her or will I? <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot who did it. But anyhow, I think it was Mum right, rang and said, Oh, Rosie, your test is positive. You're pregnant. I knew bloody well I was pregnant, she said. <laughs> and that, uh, young Joanne was the result. You lovely kid. I remember at, at Rose's funeral, I was talking to Joanne. And Joanne had a fairly low dress on with her bosoms there and quite a marked cleavage. And I was talking to her about her husband who was, didn't come to the funeral because he wasn't feeling well. And I was talking to Joe and actually she was a bit concerned about the whole thing and she obviously had a worried look on her face and two old shielders came over and elbowed me aside and started covering up Joanne's cleavage. Oh, what's the bloody interfering bitches? Well, they, they think I'm just here to talk to Joe to look down her bloody bosom. Anyhow, they talked for a while and kept covering up Joe's cleavage with, with the scarf she had around her neck and finally they pissed off but in passing they gave me a filthy look as if to say you lecherous old bastard and I was over it, I should have said look it's tough, I'm a, a doctor and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of bosoms know what they look like and know what they feel like um, anyhow yeah that was the last time I saw Joe and 
her husband, he was a bit of a weak read, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't read him. Yeah, I think they might have had an argument that day. But that was my guess. And he mm. said, well, I'm not going to your mother's funeral. Mm. Why there should be no party games at the 75th birthday. Anyhow, yeah, it's all history. But Joe, 